Hello again. Welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to ATM Spellbound. Uh, so since the last episode, I haven't done a whole lot. All I've done is kind of bring up a little bit of the walls, uh, basically just running out what little limestone I had left um, available. And then I went ahead and I decided on Polished Gabbro and Dark Scoria uh, for the roof here. And then I also uh, kind of just blocked in a little bit of this and cleaned up just slightly. Uh, and went ahead and added a second floor to this. And most of it's just framed at the moment. I haven't actually put in the blocks. Uh, but then we have a second floor up here. And my idea is this is actually going to be open. So you can look, uh, you know, from the bottom floor. And you can kind of see this upper section. And then you can also kind of look down from up here. And then we're going to have this uh, kind of walkway that then plugs into the tower. Uh, where we can actually access this. The lower parts of the tower, you know. Um, one thing that I did do is I did go ahead and set up our uh, mixer and our mechanical press. Uh, so basically we can just throw in like our copper and zinc here and activate this and then this will mix. And then of course we can throw our ingots on here and they'll get pressed. Um, I haven't set up the fans or anything like that. So uh, what we are going to do today of course is we are going to push on to our limestone setup. Uh, but let's go ahead, let's pull up Create here. And the very first thing we're going to do before we even get started on anything else is we are going to get ourselves some crushing wheels. Uh, we're going to need 16 andesite alloy per craft and then just some stone and planks. And I'm actually out of andesite again. That is fine. Let's go ahead and grab like four stacks of stone. And let's come down. We're going to be adding, before too long, we're going to be adding some easier travel between like floors and stuff like that because the base is starting to get fairly large. Uh, but let's go ahead and just get ourselves some andesite. This is going to come in so handy, as you might imagine. And then let's head up to here. Okay, there's uh, a stack in three. Uh, we actually only need about 32 for this. Uh, and then I'm also going to need just a couple pieces of stone and then a few planks, I guess. And then we'll go ahead and just quickly get this laid out. And we're going to actually be getting two crafts of crushing wheels. Um, we could get by with only three crushing wheels, just fine. Um, but I think we're going to be going with four because why not? Might even end up speeding this up just so it crafts a little bit faster. But we're going to be making some larger mechanical crafter setups uh, of course for the ATM star and then we're also going to be making probably some that are automated but uh, this one's more for manual but I probably will speed it up especially with it being a manual crafter um, I wouldn't mind making this a little bit faster oh yeah there wasn't a quest for this in the quest book was there there we go there is our four crushing wheels now in addition to our crushing wheels we are also going to want uh, for what I have in mind, I'm going to want a mechanical arm and to craft this, most of this is pretty straightforward, but we are going to have to get into sequenced assembly. Um, and since this is something that we're going to be using a bit, what all, uh, let's see, large cog wheels and the precision mechanisms and then the small cog wheels today, all I want is the precision mechanism. So uh, what we are going to do, let's see, we've already got one deployer. Let's go ahead and get, yeah, I'm going to be missing like most of these things. I'm going to have to make some more brass also. So what we'll do is we'll just throw that into there. And then we're just going to grab ourselves a few of these blaze rods for right now. And we'll just click that and that's going to start running and producing our brass. It looks like two blaze rods should make uh, a full stack of brass. Okay, now we should be all set to get our other two deployers. So there's that out of the way. And then I'm going to want some mechanical belts. I'm going to want some shafts. I'm going to want uh, probably some funnels because we'll set it up for automation once it finishes up. Um, and then if we take a look at the mechanical arm, it's cog wheel, it's large cog wheel, and then it's iron nugget, and it has to repeat five times. Also a gold plate as well. Uh, so let's go ahead. Now there is a chance that this will fail, but the chance is actually pretty low. And the sequence assembly, it's not too bad. Um, it is a little bit 
to set up the first time, but there's usually not a whole lot of recipes for it. And it's not that big of a deal. Uh, mechanical arm being the most important. Cog wheels aren't that bad just to craft, honestly. Uh, but you can get a little bit more. Uh, you do get three times the output, and it's one button, one wood less. But, eh, I don't know. I'm not in that big of a rush. However, for the mechanical arm, uh, for the precision mechanism, we actually use this in a couple things, right? The rotation speed controller, that's something that we're definitely going to be wanting. For now, we can get by without it, but that is something that we will want. So, yeah, we're going to set this up for um, actual automation. All right, so a lot of different ways that you can set this up. We are just going to be going with kind of a sort of a rotation system. So we're going to have, um, I think right here, we're going to have a mechanical belt that runs here. And then we're going to have a mechanical belt that runs like right here. And then a mechanical belt that runs to here. And then to right here. So we're going to keep it kind of kind of small and compact. Uh, so something like that. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to set up our deployers. And these are going to be just right here. So all those are laid out. And then we're going to click right here. We're going to change these to fists. And then we need to feed these items. Um, we could either use a hopper or we could go with a chute uh, for this. Yeah, let's go with the chutes. They're actually really cheap. And this way we can just kind of preload the items um, because this will be the only thing that we make here is the uh, precision mechanism. So let's go ahead. There we go. Oh, and there's a quest for that. Perfect. Then we'll just click these so we can see the items inside of there. Uh, and then let's go with some kind of item storage. It doesn't really matter. And I think we'll just go with uh, some adjustable crates. These are actually pretty good storage. Oh, and there's a quest for that. Perfect. We're just knocking out all kinds of quests. Not even anticipating it, honestly. And we're just going to set these up right here. And then each one of these is going to hold, um, you know, a different item. We, c we won't need all this storage, honestly. We could just store... Like, we could even do just a regular chest, but um, we can adjust the amount of storage that this can hold. It's actually kind of useful for um, keeping certain things stocked and being able to modify exactly how many items that you want to have it hold. Um, but for right now, I mean, we're just going to be using this kind of for manual storage. Later on, we may adjust this, though, if we have our system automatically feeding the items over, which we might do. Uh, but for right now, this will be good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put in our, let's see, well actually before we do that let me bring over our shafts. And these are going, we're just going to basically plug in right here. Yeah, we're going to run this into a gearbox and then at this point we're going to get ourselves, yeah this should be good, let's get ourselves just some encased chain drives. Oh, and there's a quest for that. Perfect. And we're going to have our chain drive setting here. And then it's going to come down right there. And you can see now it's activating these. And then we can just bring this down to right there. Yeah. Actually, I think what we're going to do, we're going to pull this off. Because I have an idea. But I need it to flow off in this direction. And this is perfect. Um, and then we can have this, parts of this kind of peeking through uh, in the tower section. I have an idea. It'll hopefully make sense <laughs> once we get over to that point. Gearbox. No, it'll need to flow in this direction. And then if I put a gearbox or a shaft in, yeah, it's not. And then what I could do is just run this out right here. And this would be going in the direction that we want. And most of this won't be visible uh, too much once we get this up and going. So this one's flowing, this one's flowing, this one's flowing. And then all we need is this one uh, to be flowing. Now this is kind of blocking it. And I think, yeah, that's going to be backwards. Which, honestly, rotation speed controllers would be perfect right here. But <laughs> that's fine. Uh, 
I think what we'll do is use this in case chain drive here. Um, let's get ourselves a shaft. We'll just run that back. And I think we're going to end up encasing a lot of these shafts that are right here anyways. And then we can run this like so. Uh, so now it's making just kind of a full rotation. And I'm going to encase that, I think. And then I've got an idea for this. Because uh, we're going to kind of make it like a wall, sort of. Like a half wall. Um, so you would approach it from this side. And then this will kind of block off and make sort of like a little hallway here. Uh, and I was wanting something in this little corner anyways. And I think this will fit that bill. Um, okay, so it's going to hit this. Um, deployer first. So we're going to put in our cog wheels here. You can see they immediately go to this deployer. And then we're going to put in our large cog wheel. And then we're going to put in our iron nugget right there. And then, uh, oh, let me change these. These need to be the open hands for this. Uh, that way they're not constantly going down. Um, for some reason I was thinking the fist did the open hand with items, but... Uh, so there we go. That's set up. And then now if we throw in our gold sheet. Um, and then we can set this up. You know, all we got to do is throw in a bunch more. Uh, you know, make sure we have however many gold sheets we're planning on running. Uh, we have that many large cog wheels, that many ironing uh, nuggets, that many small cog wheels. We make sure and throw them into the respective uh, adjustable crates. And then throw that many gold sheets onto the conveyor line. It's basically going to just circle around this. Uh, and now ideally we would basically have it auto collect the items once they're finished running around. Uh, and so for that what we're going to do is we're going to set in an adjustable crate. And this adjustable crate is going to set um, maybe right here would be good. And then what we'll do is once this finishes the final circuit... Uh, like I said, there is a chance that we're going to get junk. If you look at the item, uh, for example, with this one, we only have an 80% chance that we're going to get the precision mechanism, and there's a 20% chance that we just get junk, um, which I don't remember. I think, what I think this can be, like, andesite alloy and, like, a couple different types of sheets. You know, there's different things that we can get from it. Uh, so there's, there, there is that chance that we're going to get junk. Now, it's actually finishing its last rotation at this point. And you can see that we did get a precision mechanism. Uh, so what we're going to do just for our future's sake, we're going to put in a brass funnel and we're going to put in precision mechanisms. Um, oh, actually, this is going to be pulling from it, though, because of the placement, um, because it's directly off of that. So, uh, no, we're going to pull this up. Well, actually, I tell you what, we can put it right here would be good. Uh, and then we put the funnel in right there. Uh, we make sure that the arrow is pointing towards the crate and we put that into there. Uh, so it's only going to grab the precision mechanism. Um, and if we want to, we can make it auto collect the junk. And we probably will. Uh, I've just got to double check and see what all that junk is. So, uh, And then we can set up a filtered crate over here as well. But uh, it's not really a big deal. We just need one today, but we can make that adjustment. Um, I've just got to... I don't know if there's a way that I can see. I'm not sure. I'll take a look here in a minute and see if I can figure out what it is. Most of it's, like, stuff that we're going to have access to, I think. Like I said, I think it's metal sheets and side alloy. Uh, some odd and end stuff like that. So we'll probably set up another funnel here and another adjustable crate for that stuff. Uh, but then, of course, all we got to do is just fill this back up and throw the gold sheet on there and boom, it's running. And now it will automatically get pulled off and put into here once it gets finished. Uh, so we can run off and we can do something else the next time that we craft it. Okay, so now that we've got that, uh, let's go back to our mechanical arm. Uh, I'm going to need a bunch of brass sheets, basically. Uh, let me just get a half stack of these because I keep having to craft them. But let me go ahead and get some brass casings. And then let me go ahead and get our mechanical arm. So there's that. Okay. Now that's the worst part. The rest of it is all pretty much just shafts and different little storage things. We're going to have to make some more funnels here in a little bit. But uh, for the most part, we are pretty well set at this point. Okay. So let's pop up. We are going to be going upstairs. 
at this point. And what we're going to do is right down there is our conveyor line that's got the cobblestone. We're going to put in our mechanical arm. It's going to be sitting right over here. Now, before we do that, though, we are going to need to set up uh, the conveyor line. Uh, so we'll have a conveyor line that runs here. And this is going to come back to... I will say about right there. And we're going to go ahead and run a belt over right there. Okay. And then we're going to have a belt that runs right here. And then we're going to have a belt that runs, say, to right here. And then we're going to have a belt that runs right here. And let me get some more shafts. 16. Be fine. And then we're going to have a belt that runs to here like that and then we're gonna put in our mechanical arm setting uh, right here first up we're gonna right click right there we're gonna say take items from belt it's gonna be the blue one then we're gonna right click twice here and say deposit items to belt uh, and then we're gonna put our mechanical arm in right there okay now what we're going to do is let's get ourselves a cog wheel and we're going to have to run up some power to this. Let me uh, see. If I opened up this, whereabouts? Okay. This is actually not terrible. Let's see. That's where we came down at. But I think I'd like to pull off of this line. So let's, uh, let's open this up slightly. I'll make some adjustments to the way the floor is laid out. Um, well, actually, it'll be pretty easy adjustments. And let's go ahead and put in our vertical gearbox there. And we're just going to bring this up. Break open our floor right here. And we'll come up right there. Because uh, I want everything up here moving at a decent speed. And then let's get ourselves another gearbox. Make it into a vertical one. And let's say I had a gearbox setting here. That's actually perfect too. So we're going to put in that right there. And you can see that all of this is running now. It's actually going to be running fairly quickly. But I want the higher speed. Uh, for the grindstone. Normally I don't care as much for the higher speed, but I want this to process pretty quick. Once it comes up here, I want it to just zoom through this, to be honest. And then for right here, we're just going to put in a gearbox right there. And then also let's go ahead and put in one of our crushing wheels. It's going to be sitting right there because uh, it's going to be crushing the stuff that goes over these conveyor belts. Um, and then we're going to... Let's see, actually, it's right there. Yeah, actually, let's just, uh, instead of doing that, let's just convert this over to a vertical gearbox instead. And we'll put our vertical gearbox in right here. But before we do, let's put in our shafts. Vertical gearbox there. And then if we put a crushing wheel in right here, you can see these are spinning in different directions. And it's kind of nice here because you can kind of just alternate back and forth. Uh, so we'll have another vertical gearbox setting here with yet another crushing wheel on it. Because uh, these, these crushing wheels can share sides basically. So this one works for both of these. And of course you need these running at opposite, uh, opposite directions for it to work. So... Boom, oh, and then we're gonna bring this out and then let's get ourselves uh, our in case chain drive. Let's get one more craft of this. And we're going to run this out just right there and that's gonna fire that up. And then for right here, we're gonna go ahead, run this out and then we're just gonna do an in case chain drive right there uh, to bring our power around. And then let's go ahead and get ourselves one more gearbox. We're going to turn this one into a vertical, of course. And we're going to put in our very last 
Crusher. It's going to go right there. And then our last crushing wheel is going to go right there. And now what we're going to do, let's get ourselves a few chests. Let's go with uh, three for right now. We're going to have this chest sitting right here. And we're going to have a brass funnel. We're going to be making a few more of these. But for this first one, brass funnel sitting there, uh, which is going to feed into the chest. Now, I might change this out with an adjustable crate or something. Uh, and if so, that's fine. But... Uh, at this point now, we could start this up and it would start collecting the cobblestone. And then we're going to set another one up right here with another brass funnel right there. And then this one comes up. We're going to have this one feed over once again to another chest. Right, or do I want to use, just use drawers? Uh, I tell you what, let's just use drawers uh, for this. And in this first drawer, we are going to slot in and lock in gravel. And then in the second one, and we're not going to be putting void upgrades into this. So, uh, like ever. <clears throat> the second one, we're going to slot and lock in sand. And then on this last one, we are going to slot and lock in lime sand. Now, there are some byproducts that can come from these. Uh, for example, let me just grab a piece of this cobblestone. Uh, if we take a look, if we crush cobblestone, we get no byproduct. It's just gravel 100% of the time. But if we crush gravel, uh, we're going to get flint and we're going to get clay. And then if we crush sand, we are going to get uh, bone meal. So we are going to make plans for these. Let's get ourselves a few crafts of brass funnels because we're going to be using these today. Uh, now, the first one that we're going to be getting is the clay and flint. And it's going to come up right after this crusher here. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have an additional funnel and an additional drawer. Now, it's not important that we are able to actually access this. Um, we are going to have it set up in a way that we can walk around behind this, but we're not going to really be walking over here. Because uh, once we get our system set up and we add the last little bit, which we'll get into... Uh, in a few episodes, because we need something from another mod, uh, we will never need to access this area whatsoever. So, uh, But we're going to put in a drawer here. This one is going to have clay, and it's going to have flint. And these are going to be locked in. And then we are going to have a brass funnel that sits right there. And we're going to say, yeah, we want it to feed off in this direction. And it should have no issues whatsoever keeping up. Uh, with the stuff coming through this conveyor. so, uh, And then we'll do the same thing right over here. We're going to have the other drawer, and this is a single one. Uh, it's going to be set up. Uh, we'll have the last one instead setting right there, and then we'll just have the brass funnel attach right there like that. And the arrow is pointing in the correct direction. So it's going to grab the bone meal, it's going to grab gravel, it's going to grab uh, the lime sand. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to bring up a shaft here and a shaft right there. And then just mechanical belt those together like so. And you can see that this is starting to grab the cobblestone and starting to dump it onto the conveyor. And if we take a look here, well, you can see the gravel... You can see it getting crushed up real quick, and then it turning into gravel. Now, right now, it's probably doing an entire stack. Um, sometimes it'll grab a stack, and it'll take it a second to eat through it. Um, and I know that cobblestone back here was really backed up, so that's most likely what it was. Uh, now, at some point, this will eventually back up. That's why we're not going to use void upgrades. We will probably use it on, like, the flint and the clay and the bone meal, uh, but not the primary resources. Um, because eventually then everything will kind of back up and it will sit on the conveyors until it's needed and then it will move on as soon as there's space. Uh, now what we're going to do is let's grab our brass funnels and if we just attach this right there it's going to start sending the gravel through and that gravel is now going to start getting smashed and turned into sand. So you can see some just went through and then the clay and the flint's getting grabbed here and collected by this funnel. 
So, boom, you saw some clay and flint go really, really fast through here. And this is kind of the reason that we wanted the big spade, because if you try to process down like a whole stack of items without a lot of spade, it's going to take a long time. So having a lot of spade does help uh, kind of keep the system moving. Now, before I plug up the last one and start actually turning the sand into bone meal and lime sand, uh, we need to kind of plug all this up. And to do that, we're going to start bringing out... Because, uh, of course, this isn't the final step. After we get the lime sand, then we need to cook it into limestone, and then we need to weather it with water. So, uh, with our fans. So, let's actually grab our encased fans at this point. And to do this, what we're going to do is, first up, we're going to put in a vertical gearbox setting right there. And then we're going to put in a regular gearbox right there. So, that's going to start that moving. And... Let's go ahead at this point and put in this last brass funnel for this side. So right there, that's going to start shipping off the items. And there we go. There went some bone meal and some lime sand. I'm sorry it's always raining. It's just, just the luck I have, I think. Um, and then we are going to put shaft in here. We're also going to put a shaft in. Well, I guess we had that one right there. Oh well, I've already put it down, I don't really mind. A shaft here, and then we'll do a shaft right here, I think. And we'll just bring that over. Uh, so that's going to start, that'll be able to pull out the lime sand and send it down. Okay, so we're going to have a drawer. This drawer is going to sit right here. And we don't have to worry about this crusher wheel because it's not going to do anything without another one opposite it. Uh, so just a heads up there. Uh, but we're going to come up, this is going to be where the roof's at. So we're gonna put in a glass pane right here. And then we're gonna come up a couple more blocks here. And right up there, we're actually gonna put an encased fan setting right there. Um, and then I don't know what block I'm gonna do the roof as. So for right now, I'm just gonna run this out like so. And, of course, this area is going to be higher than this, so uh, there's actually, I think, going to be one more section above it, so um, we're just going to block that in with Gabbro Cobblestone for the time being. And then we're going to take and we're going to put our bucket of lava right there. And right here, we're going to run out, um, probably just run it up, yeah, we'll just run it up right here, we'll run a shaft up, uh, let me get... Another set of shafts. Uh, and then right here, we'll go ahead and do a speed increase so our fans get done really, really quick. Uh, so we'll do that. And we'll do that. And, yeah, it's flowing the right way. Perfect. Uh, and so at this point, if we were to grab one of these and we throw it down on the conveyor, it comes down here, and then it quickly gets smelted over into limestone. And we're going to go ahead and slot that, lock it in, and then at this point, we can put in a brass funnel that sits right there. And then at this point, we can drop a brass funnel in right there. It's going to start sending the lime sand over, and that's going to get smelted up. And this is, I think, like a stack that's running right now or whatever. Um, but then that's going to get smelted up into our limestone. And then we just have to do the same thing with the water, basically. Uh, so what we'll do is we will put in... Honestly, for this one, I think... Uh, since I don't want it to go too far over, and since this is the last step, uh, let's just do this with a depot. Let's get ourselves our depot. And we're just going to put this right here. And then we are going to open this up we're going to put in our other fan right there our other glass pane right there we'll run our gabbro and we'll put down our water right there and then for this uh, probably the easiest way to move it over is going to be just with cogwheels like that because you won't be able to see any of that anyways 
uh, and that way the water starts flowing we'll go ahead and grab one of these throw it right there and then I think for this last part we're gonna have it set up right there um, and then what we'll do is we'll just run out cogs to here <laughs> this is gonna make an interesting site and then we could even run oh yeah I actually have an idea for that I have an idea for that uh, which is just gonna add more fun and movement to our base um, and then we are going to let me get a few more of these another craft of these and we're gonna go ahead and set this back up and we are going to make ourselves another mechanical arm this is actually starting to look kind of nifty in here like there is a lot of stuff going on uh, now grindstones I don't think grindstones or cr I mean crushing wheels are the nicest looking things sometimes especially when they're spinning like super fast like we've got them <laughs> usually usually uh, create doesn't look great at this speed because it's just too fast but it keeps our stuff processing and make sure that we have plenty of limestone I honestly I might end up slowing it down because I think it's just a little bit too fast like visually maybe slow it down a notch but uh, that shouldn't be a problem for us so um, I probably will end up doing that, I think, uh, here in just a moment. But I do like it because we're going to be able to see both these floors moving um, and everything kind of going and doing things uh, within this room. And uh, we'll tidy it all up and everything uh, as this build section kind of comes together. But I think that's going to be the last floor that's open and then we're going to have the roof there. Uh, but we might we might add some movement to the ceiling just to add like another layer uh, to this room I think but uh, we take a look here we did get our precision mechanism that's great uh, and then let's go ahead and get our mechanical arm or actually I forget these drawers can't be accessed directly but that's fine uh, what we'll do is we'll have the drawer setting here we're gonna have a brass funnel uh, just feeding in right there and we're gonna go ahead and put and tell it that it can only accept that weathered limestone uh, and then we're going to that's going to be input that's going to be output we'll put it down right there it's going to grab the stuff and it's going to be depositing it now into this drawer as soon as it gets finished uh, since this is filtered so we give it just a moment here it does take a second because it's doing a stack but there we go it just deposited another one and that way, when we come down right here, we basically just kind of have this little access area. Okay, I've been editing some footage and I got us a couple foliate transporter books crafted up uh, because we're actually going to be using these for one additional setup before we end out the episode. Now, a couple small things I want to make note of. Uh, right now, I'm having to kind of manually feed just a little bit of cobblestone into the system. And the reason being, if you take a look right here it's running down and that's because our mechanical arm is grabbing that cobblestone just constantly um, it's not an issue in the long term uh, I debated about if I wanted to split this off you know through a tunnel and have it part of it make sure it goes here and part of it go to the mechanical arm but long term that's actually not an issue right now it's just filling buffers and that's the only reason uh, that it's doing that at the moment. Now also this has uh, backed up here. So this drawer is filled and this drawer is filled. And it's working on backing up lime sand. It's actually building this stuff up. 32 stacks of these things. Extremely quickly. So <laughs> I'm very very happy with that. Uh, and I did go ahead and set up a fan with a depot. Uh, that way we can cook our kelp and stuff. Because... Um, I didn't have that set up and I actually had to use the furnace to smelt a little bit of kelp earlier and I was like, eh, I need to hurry up and get that in place, the smoker. Uh, and then over here we have another fan with lava uh, and we're going to be doing a quick setup over here. Uh, let's go ahead and drop a Foley out. Uh, we are going to set him to deposit. He's going to be depositing here. And then if we take a look at dusts. The only thing is if we do forge, if we just do forge dust, just take all forge dust, he's going to get like redstone and stuff. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and just 
whitelist him. And we can always set up like more smelting stations. That would be fine. And have other foliats doing, you know, different ores and stuff like that. But we're just going to whitelist all the, the same ores that we have uh, in our current ore processing area. And then we'll just go ahead and set this to extract, do that. And then he's going to start packing over the ore or the dust uh, that we specified. And he's going to start dumping them into here. And then we're going to take our other foliat. We're going to set this one up, uh, I don't know, like right there. Uh, deposit is going to be here. And then we're going to set extract. And before we do that, let's go ahead and open him up. Um, and I think, uh, is it forge ingots? Yeah, forge ingots. Um, we're going to go ahead and add forge ingots to his whitelist. And we're going to go ahead and set, this is the extract. So he's going to start grabbing the ingots uh, once they're finished and then taking them, dumping them into our system. And then this one is going to keep replenishing uh, the iron dust that's on there. And that way we've got our ores being smelted, you know, because we've just had them in dust form for a while. And I was having to manually smelt them, which was fine. I mean, they smelt fine and they smelt really quick with Create. Uh, but since we're not going to be able to do the 12 times, then we might as well just straight smelt these like so. I did have to remake this one um, because there was a spider and it spit at me and it hit him instead and I actually managed to kill him. So I did have to remake one of them but and reset him up. So, uh, But that's fine. They're cheap enough at this point uh, that it's no biggie. So, uh, But yeah, so I think that's pretty much everything that we need from create right this second. I mean, we're not done with create by any stretch of the imagination, but that's kind of what I wanted to get done in this episode. So we've kind of got this create factory going. Uh, we will still probably end up automating some other things with create. Uh, originally I had thought about doing another cobble gen with Batania because I always love doing the cobble gens with Batania. Uh, however, we've done them a lot. We've done create as well, you know, on Valhelsia kind of, but since we're doing the weathered limestone and we needed all that anyways, I figured, well, and this way we kind of got power coming from the same system uh, that we need to power everything. We've got plenty of power coming in. Uh, with our entire system that we got set up today, if we take a look here, uh, we've barely even scratched our stress units, so... Um, I could speed all the machines up. I'm honestly probably going to end up slowing this down once the buffers are filled. Like I mentioned, because it's just, it looks horrendous when it moves that fast, you know? And so I think I would like to, to run just a little bit slower. Um, the fans running fast is fine. Like up there, I don't mind that. But uh, I don't like the mechanical arms and stuff spinning quite so fast. And the crushing wheels spinning quite so fast. So, well, actually get a lot of our stress units back and we're not going to be hurting for any of these resources so I don't really see a point in speeding them up so we've got enough power we've got enough stress units to carry this on uh, and do a bit more with this same system basically just running off these two flywheels they just generate so much stress units you can do so much with flywheels it's ridiculous uh, and we don't have to really at this point worry about anything <laughs> in terms of uh in terms of our stress units so uh but yeah so anyways i know it's about wrapping up point for this episode so we're going to end this one out here um i'll try to work on maybe getting this area finished out cleaned up we may add a couple more things in here like i said i would like to do maybe some movement on the ceiling you know whether that be gantries or something i don't know uh, but we'll do we'll do something on the ceiling originally actually i was originally thinking about having a create elevator right over here but then i was like well i need this so we'll put that there and i don't know if i've really got space for create elevator but we might stick one in somewhere uh maybe do one in the tower section would be kind of nice but i don't know we'll see honestly i'd rather have a batania elevator to be honest but uh, if i'm being completely honest so uh but we'll see we'll see so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. Uh, next episode, we are 
I'm on the fence about a couple different things. We're either going to uh, work towards getting some item logistics related things or maybe doing some exploration, maybe starting Mana and Artifice. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not for sure just yet. So I'd also like to get a wood farm up and going, but uh, I don't know. I'm kind of thinking about doing that with Batania. Um, we've done them before, but we could do them with Foliads. It would be easy. We could do them with create it would be easy but i just love batania farms and they're big and pretty so i don't know we might do that uh, but we'll see we shall see so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the episode i hope to see you guys next time until then as always do take care stay safe and i'll see you guys then